Hello, hello lovelies. Well, today I'm going to talk about ascension symptoms. Now, I'll start off with um, what's happening in space and the cosmos. And there is so much light coming to our planet now and light holds information. Uh, and light also comes in frequency and um, all sorts of light molecules and all sorts of stuff. Uh, but it's what it's doing is it's we're also in the um, photon belt, which, of course, is more light that we're going through. Even though with that, we've we've actually gone through the the most heaviest part of that and we're coming out slowly out the other side of that. But um, there are so many changes going on in the cosmos and in our solar system and our universe even the spot on, um, which one's got the spot? Is it Jupiter, I think. Have I got that right? Anyway, the one with the spot. Uh, is the spot's changing. So uh, there's all sorts of changes going on, not just for Earth, but for the other planets in our universe, in our solar system. But there's changes coming and going all the way through space at the moment. And it is partly to do with the photon belt, but it seems to happen every sort of 26,000 years that there, there is this mass section of big change that goes on. And I, I actually don't know what's causing it, but if you look at um, different ancient books like um, the Bible, one of them, uh, the time of um, the ark, Noah and the ark, well that would have been based on a true event that happened on planet earth. Now I'm talking definitely a spiritual thing but I'm talking in a practical way, a uh, physical way that it definitely was an event that happened. I believe that all the stories and the books, the ancient texts and things like that, the Bible, the Quran, have got similar stories in them and they're all based on fact even though they have been changed over the years. So going back to Noah's Ark, that would have been a time where it there would have been mass floods across the earth and um, there would have been someone perhaps called Noah that, that built a boat and tried to save as many animals as he could. And uh, then it, then it uh, escalated afterwards. And obviously there were survivors, otherwise there wouldn't be stories about it. And, then, and it, if you go back to Atlantis and Lemuria as well, that would have been a 20, uh, 26-year cycle, um, 26,000-year cycle. And the dinosaurs being wiped out. Again, that could have possibly been the 26 year cycle. And there's, of course, there's other things as well, which I actually probably don't even know about yet, but I feel like there are many others. Uh, so I think it's been going on, or I feel like it's been going on for a long, long time. And I also believe that um, there are, you know, many events that lead up to this. Now we are leading up to, because they've actually done the, uh, taken out the ice cores and um, had a look and made a graph and everything about uh, the changes in the earth temperature and how, how many times it happened, you know, and all that sort of thing. And according to that, we are coming up to a big change. Now obviously we're certainly going through some changes now. Now I'm not not saying that it's going to be the end of the world or anything like that because this time it is totally different. Uh, yes there are lots and lots of energy coming through space so we're still getting those changes. Now there's also talk of this planet Nibiru uh, coming in and you know some scientists say that um, with our planets and the way they are around our sun that there must be an object right out here that's keeping the balance and that that could be heading back in to make those changes. And it could take 26,000 years 
to do its cycle, to come close to the earth again. Um, so anyway, it's creating a lot of magnetic um, push and pull and energy and what's coming from space anyway. So we are getting a lot of stuff happening at the moment. And you can see that slowly over the last few years, the earth changes have got more, like the earthquakes and, and what have you have, have seemed to have got more intense. Um, you know, luckily, in most areas, there is um, not too much destruction. Uh, I know, unfortunately, some places have had destruction as well, but there are north, normal earth changes that are going on. And these energies and the changing of the earth affects us. So I'm just going to remind you of, you know, when there's a full moon, we've just had a big full moon. How many of you get affected when there's a full moon? I know I do. I seem to hold more water retention in my body. Um, I can feel more emotional, you know, all sorts of things like that. So I know I get affected and I know that many, many others get affected as well. And I know in some countries they even put, if a full moon happens to fall over a weekend, they will get extra staff in the emergency department and also extra police on uh, especially if it's going to be a big super moon because people get affected by it now of course the moon is to do with fluid hence why the king tides and the high tides to do with the moon it's the moon that's doing that and the magnetic pull and push and and all that that's coming from the planets and the moon and and all of those things now obviously as you can tell i'm not a scientist <laughs> But I'm getting getting round to ascension symptoms. Uh, so we all get affected by what's happening in space. That was my point about mentioning the moon. So anyway, the, here is a list of some of the ascension symptoms. This is a list I've shared on my Facebook page today. Uh, there are a couple more things on there that I can't see on there that I know definitely is on there. Um, so I'll say the one that I get myself, and this is sinus problems. So feeling like this is all tight and bunged up, sinus problems, having to constantly blow my nose, nasal drip, all that stuff. And this is all to do with sinuses and what's going on in there. But it is, for me, I know it's an ascension symptom. Headaches, head pressure. Head pressure and headaches all around here. I often get head pressure, very rarely get actual headache, but head pressure can be quite intense sometimes. Sometimes it can be on the top, sometimes it can be here, sometimes it can be just all around the back there. And that is another symptom. Ringing in the ears. Now who's been getting loads of ringing in the ears? Could be different ears. Really high pitched, like, like your inner ear and your balance is adjusting. Now that also could be a download of information because uh, I know that also um, information comes through frequency. But it could be that everything's equalizing because of the pressure and what's going on um, with us. I'll tell you why we're getting it in a minute too. Um, or why we're feeling it. So throat irritation or needing to clear your throat often. I get that. I often get that or having a cough. I need to clear my throat and cough. I definitely get that. Anxiety is another one. I don't get that very often. Very rare actually. Long time since I've had anxiety. Trouble sleeping or needing more sleep. Yes, I definitely get that. I go to sleep fine, but I wake up in the middle of the night often and I'll be wide awake and then trying to get back to sleep again. Um, I am a late night person though, because I like to stay up and do sky watches really late at night. So I normally go to bed about 12 or one. So it's a bit too late really, because I don't get the full amount of sleep. Hence why I get red looking eyes often and eye bags. <laughs> like last night I went to bed about one o'clock and I was awake at seven. So not probably getting enough sleep. But anyway, yes, yeah, sleep problems. Vivid dreams, another one, big vivid dreams. I definitely dream every night. I often don't remember them. If I remember them, I believe there is a message in there that I need to really look into. 
Um, fatigue, yes, I get tired. Hence, if I don't sleep properly at night, get tired during the day. Sweating more. Um, I know other people get this. Yes, I probably get that occasionally, but not very often. I've never been one that sweats a lot. Uh, random intolerance to for certain foods. Yes, occasionally that. Um, nausea as well. Yes, I get nausea sometimes. Uh, diarrhea is another one and a dodgy stomach. Occasionally get that, not very often. Um, dizziness or feeling floaty. Yes, I used to get that on and off. I've had that. That is a weird feeling. And I know other people that get that a lot. Anyone who gets that, really concentrate on grounding. Ground your energy, your energy body. Ground it into the earth. So go and stand on the grass and actually use your conscious mind to connect your energy from your heart or from your head, coming down through your body, out of your feet and going down into the earth and anchoring into the earth. Really important to stay grounded. Um, what else we got here? Aches and pains. Yes, definitely get aches and pains. Shortness of breath. Yes, I get that sometimes. Yawning or burping often. Yes, occasionally get that too. Excessive thirst. Definitely get that. And pains in the hands, wrists, knees, feet or ankles. So your joints. Any pains in the joints? I definitely get that too. Um, and, and the other one that I was going to mention is like a stiff neck and shoulders. Another one. So as you can see, there are quite a few ascension symptoms. There are more than that. So, I mean, obviously, if you're getting something regularly, it's best to go and get checked out by your doctor. Um, and if, you, if you're getting that gut feeling to go and get checked out, then go and get checked out. Uh, but a lot of this is the changes in the magnetic flow of the earth and, and everything else that's going on, like I've explained. Now, the reason why we get it is because of all that energy coming to the earth that is affecting us, it's coming into our light body. So our light body is feeling great. Our energy body is feeling great. But actually, it takes a while to integrate all that down into the physical, into the 3D plane. So hence why uh, you get the aches and pains, because you're just going through a, a uh, time of shifting and adjusting in your entire being. So your energy body, your physical body, your soul body and your emotional body. Everything has to then adjust together and fully align. And often it is the physical body, which is the last thing to actually align properly. So that is why uh, we get ascension symptoms. It's just the physical body is taking longer to adjust to the energies that are coming to the earth, put simply. So I hope you've enjoyed this. If you feel like there's anyone else in your family or friends that are getting these aches and pains and symptoms and they've perhaps been to the doctor and there's the doctors can't find anything. They may have even had scans and everything and the doctors still can't find anything. Then more often than not, it could be that they're just going through an intense time of ascension symptoms because their light body and their soul body has shifted to a higher frequency, but the physical body hasn't caught up yet. That's all it is. And it can be quite intense. I remember... Um, probably about six or seven years ago even it might even be longer than that maybe even 10 years ago I went through a big stage of getting ascension symptoms and one of my biggest thing in fact that's not on there um the, one of my biggest things was feeling this inner vibration so this would have been my nervous system and everything trying to adjust and set in together but I used to get, it used to feel like I've got the shakes inside, like big time, but I wasn't shaking. But it was a vibration and almost like a buzzing, like a frequency that was going on. And I could literally feel the energy inside me doing this vibration. And I used to get that a lot. I only get that occasionally now. 
I'm at the point where if I start feeling out of sorts, whether it's emotionally, whether it's physically or whatever it is, I know without a doubt I'm going for a shift. So I acknowledge it, accept it and go with the flow through it. I don't stick my heels in or think I'm majorly ill or any of those things. I just go with the flow and I know I'm going to come out the other end, even though it might be difficult at times, especially when it's an emotional thing. It can be quite upsetting, perhaps, because you've got all this inner turmoil going on. Um, but I know when it happens to me that I'm going to come out the other side at a higher frequency. So that always helps me to get through. So I'm hoping by having this knowledge and wisdom within you, that if you go through a big shift, which you will, because we all do, um, just know that you're going to get through this and you will come out the other side. You'll be a higher frequency. And when you're a higher frequency, a higher vibration, you're, certainly your immune system is so much higher. You have an inner knowing of what's going on around you. Uh, your psychic abilities are much more in tune. You're connected more with uh, your higher consciousness and uh, you can see beyond just the physical. It's, it's amazing. If you just go through the flow each time you have a shift and you know you're raising in frequency and you're coming out of 3D, you're going into 4D, 5D and beyond because I know that I tap into... 7 and 13D at times. Um, obviously, I'm here in the 3D too, but I like to try and keep myself at an even keel and uh, know that I'm going through these shifts. And often when I'm doing my work, I tap into much higher dimensions. Uh, and, and it's beautiful, I want to say. It's absolutely beautiful. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Please don't worry if you're getting any of these symptoms. It's probably ascension symptoms. Like I said, if you are really worried and you're getting many or or um, you get any gut feeling that you should go and get checked out, then please go and get checked out um, and just go with the flow with what what unfolds. So lots and lots of love. Take care and I will see you tomorrow. Much love. Bye.